फ्रीकल्चर और सिल्क प्रोडक्शन फ्रॉम द माथ ऑफ बॉम्बिक्स मोर एस ए लॉन्ग एंड कलरफुल हिस्टरी अनोन टू मोस्ट पीपल्स हाल दो देर वर सवरल कमर्शियल स्पीसीज ऑफ सिल्कोर्म बॉम्बिक्स मोर इज द मोस्ट वाइडली यूज एंड इंटेंसिवली स्टडीड एंड टेक्निक फॉर इट्स रेयरिंग आर द मोस्ट इम्प्रूव द इंसेक्ट इज द सोलो लिविंग स्पीसीज इन इट्स फैमिली बॉम्बिसीडे एंड हैज बीन डोमेस्टिकेटेड for so long that it probably no longer survives in the world silk is a fine lustrous fiber produced by silkworms and other insect larvae generally to form their cocoons the breeding of silkworms and the making of silk began in prehistoric time china is generally credited with the first silkworms although some claim have been made that is originated in india Silk can be considered as a remarkable invention of mankind to such an extent that most of the ladies could not conceive a world without silk. Producing silk is a lengthy process that demands constant close monitoring of the minute details. Silk began to be used for paying government servants and also for rewarding subjects for their outstanding services. There are Many indigenous varieties of wild silk moss found in a number of different countries. The key to understand the great mystery and magic of silk and China's domination of its production and promotion lies with one species, the blind flightless moth Bombyx mori. Once upon a time long long ago in an ancient kingdom of China there lived queen Zi Ling wife of emperor Hangi Dai who was said to have ruled China in about 3000 BC she was interested in the introduction of silk rearing arts and invention of the loom one day she was sat under her favorite mulberry tree in the garden sipping tea and admiring the beautiful spring flowers something fell into her tea cup she jumped to her feet and spilled the tea all over her lovely dress her ladies in waiting rushed to wipe up the stain but lady zeling stopped them on top of the tea stain on her dress she spotted a lovely web of the most executive threads she had wove her before she carefully picked up the delicate threads from the cocoon where it fell from mulberry tree she sat on her loom and started working out a complicated pattern it was the most executive piece she had even woven she discovered of silk was celebrated with great festing and rejoicing throughout the land later in commercial relations were established between china and the rest of the world knowledge of the silk spread far wide More recent archaeological finds a small ivory cup carved with a silkworm design and the to between 6000 and 7000 years old and sipping tools silk thread and fabric fragments from sites along the lower angi river reveal the origins of silkworm to be even earlier initially silk was a royal luxury and ends reserved exclusively for the ruler only the emperor is close relations and the dignitaries of the highest rank were authorized for the use of silk suppose the emperor wore a robe of white silk within the palace outside e the empress and the there to the throne wore yellow silk gradually the various classes of society began wearing tunics of silk and silk came into more general use as well as being used for clothing and decoration silk was quite quickly put to industrial use by the chinese this was something which happened in the west only in modern times silk indeed rapidly become one of the principal elements of the chinese economy silk was used for musical instruments fishing lines bowstring bonds of all kinds and even rag paper the world's first luxury paper eventually even the common people were able to wear garments of silk during the and destiny silk ceased to be a mere industrial material and became an absolute value in itself farmers paid their taxes in grain and silk silk began to be used for paying civil servants and rewarding subjects for outstanding services 
values were calculated in length of silk as they had been calculated in pounds of gold. Before long, it was to become a currency used in trade with foreign countries. This use of silk continued during the Tang as well. It is possible that this added importance was the result of major increases in production. He found its way to thoroughly into the Chinese language that 230 of the 5000 most common characters of the Mandarin alphabet have silk as their key. According to Chinese records, the discovery of silk production from Bombix Mori occurred about 2700 BC. Chinese legend state that the great friends Ang Etai directed his wife Si Ling Chi to examine the silkworm and test the practicability of using the thread. Therefore, Si Ling Chi discovered not only the means of rising silkworms but also the manner of reeling the silk and of employing it to make garments. His Lingu Chi was later defined for her work and honored with the name Sithan or the goddess of silkworm. Silkworm during the following countries spread through China and silk became a precious commodity highly sought by other countries. In 139 BC, the world's longest highway was opened and stretched from eastern China to the Mediterranean Sea. In addition to tangible commodities such as good and jade, new ideas and religions also passed along this road. This road was historically famous Silk Road, named after its most important commodity. By the middle of the first century AD, rights in Rome were complaining about the sumptuous silk garments that rendered women ranked in the stress. But in China's ad guaranteed the secret of silkworm so closely the early Romans never learned it, and Virgil thought the threads was derived from combing the fuzz of leaves. Silkworm reached Korea around 200 BC with Chinese immigrants. It also reached the West soon. One of the most old stories is that the prince of present Haitan courted and one Chinese princess who smuggled out silkworm eggs. Later, the secret reached Belgium also, resulting in silk industry in the Middle East. The Persian too mastered the art of silk weaving gradually. Silk industry became widespread in Europe. Literary sources such as the Book of History and the Book of Rights give further information about silkworm. Reeling and spinning were always considered thousands duties for women, while weaving and embroidery were carried out in workshops as well as the home. In every silk producing province, the daughters, mothers, mothers and grandmothers of every family devoted a large part of the day of six months in a year to feeding, tending and supervision of silkworms and to the unraveling spinning, weaving, dyeing and embroidering of silk. By the 5th century BC, at least six Chinese provinces were producing silk. Each spring, the Empress herself inaugurated the silk rising season. For silk production was the work of women all over China. The technique and process of silkworm were guarded, secret and closely controlled by Chinese authorities. Anyone who revealed the secret of smuggled the silkworm eggs or cocoon outside of China would be punished by death. The great French scientist Louis Pasteur rescued the silk industry in 1870 by showing that the epidemic febrile disease of silkworms could be controlled by prevention through simple microscopy examination of adult female mass. These advances set the trend for a more mechanized and scientific approach to silk production than existed previously. Silkworm has also been attempted in the United States, but these endeavors have been sporadic and largely unsuccessful. Silkworm was carried and to some extent by the early colonists of Virginia, South Carolina and Georgia and was introduced into England about 660. In 1831, a manual on silkworm was published by J. H. Cobb, 
कॉपीज ऑफ विच और परचेस्ड बाय द कांग्रेस ऑफ यूनाइटेड स्टेट्स ऑफ डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन बाय मेंबर्स फॉलोइंग पब्लिकेशन ऑफ दिस बुक देर वॉज अ डिटर्माइंड एफर्ट टू एस्टाब्लिश सीकल्चर ऑन ए फर्म बेसिस इन द यूनाइटेड स्टेट्स दिस इंटरेस्ट इन सीकल्चर सून लेट टू वाट वॉज दोन एज द मोरस मल्टीकॉल इज क्रेज एंटिसिपेटिंग ए मोस्ट प्रॉफिटेबल इन्वेस्टमेंट If not speedy riches, thousands of individuals purchased mulberry plants of Morus multicolis species and planted in large areas of valuable land. The investments were exceeded possible returns, and AV frauds destroyed plantation of trees. In the course of a few years, many villagers and great disappointments were caused to complete a revolution of feeling that. Sericulture was practically abandoned all through the states. However, because Confederate cotton was unavailable during and shortly after the Civil War, the Union states were forced to seek a new source of fiber. Thus, in 1869, Professor L. Travellet, an American naturalist, brought eggs of the gypsy moth, Limteria diptera, from France to Massachusetts. Travellet had Hoped to produce a commercial source of silk by developing a ordic race of silk-producing insects crossing the gypsy moth with a silk or moth. So, in order to control wilt disease, then causing severe problems in some silk or industries. However, during the course of this experiment, some of the eggs were lost and some of the capitalists escaped from his home. Although this incident was made by public at the time, did not. received much attention even though the gypsy moth was immediately recognized as a pest since its introduction into the Boston area over a century ago the gypsy moth has greatly expanded its range and become one of the north america's most serious forest pest defoliating large areas of canopy every year silk moths are found in many indigenous varieties across the world The species found in China is Bombyx mori. This is a blind, flightless moth with a lifespan of 9 to 10 days. During its lifespan, it lays around 500 eggs in 4 to 6 days. The eggs are really minute. However, from one ounce of eggs, around 30,000 worms will be hatched. They feed on mulberry leaves. The original wild ancestor of the cultivated species of today is Bombyx mandarina. More. that lives on white mulberry trees rarely found in other countries this unique moth of china produces threads with smoother finer and rounder filaments than that of other silk moth perhaps the evolution of bombyx mori to the present state a moth which has lost its power to fly only capable of mating and producing eggs for the next generation of silk producer could be attributed to thousands of years of sericulture Mulberry belongs to the genus Morus of the family Moraceae, the biggest family in the order Articles. Linnaeus established the genus Morus with the seven species: wise Morus alba, Morus nigra, Morus rubra, Morus indica, Morus tartarica, Morus papillifera, and Morus tinctoria. The last two species were later considered to represent a distinct genera, Prosnesia and Chlorophora, respectively. subsequently a large number of new species new varieties and forms have been described from different parts of the world today morus comprises about 68 species distributed both in tropical and temperate agroclimatic condition however the identity and nomenclature of the species of morus is so confusing the number of species growing in the world keep fluctuating the species of morus being highly heterozygous and as unisexual plants produce a number of natural hybrids with many intermediate forms which create difficulties with regard to their correct taxonomic delimitation regarding the origin of morus parker opined that the genus was probably indigenous to china and was later naturalized to west asia southern europe and america jane ke hamal considered china as the center of its origin bena and kachero anildar and ashan 
were of the opinion that the sub Himalayan region of the Indian may be the probable place of the origin of the genus Morus. There are about 68 species in the genus Morus, majority of them occur in Asia, especially in China. Continental America is also rich in Morus species. The genus is poorly represented in Africa, Europe and Middle East and it is represented in Australia. Thus, one can witness a great varied distribution pattern of the species, varieties and forms of the genus on this globe. Silk production today is the blend of ancient techniques and modern innovations. The first stage of silk production is the etching the silkworm hex which have been previously examined and shown to be free from diseases. Larvae are then fed cup to mulberry leaves and after the fourth mod, climb a twig placed near them and sip their silken cocoons. The silk is a continuous filament, fiber consisting of fibrin protein secreted from the two salivary glands in the head of each larvae and a gum called sericin which cements the two filaments together. Pupae within cocoons are killed by steam or fumigation to prevent adult emergence, which would could be and tangle the silk filaments. Cocoons are later softened in hot water to remove the silicin, thus freeing silk filaments for railing. Single filaments are drawn from cocoons in water, bows and combined to form yarn. This yarn is drawn under tension through several guides and eventually wound onto reels. The yarn is dried, packed according to quality and is now raw silk ready for marketing. World silk production has approximately doubled during the last 30 years in spite of man-made fiber replacing silk for some users. China and Japan during this period have been the two main producers together manufacturing more than 50% of the world production in each year. China during the late 1970s drastically increased in its silk production and became the world's leading producer of silk. The 1070s were a period of tremendous political and social appeal in China, resulting in various economic reforms. Undoubtedly, these reforms are partially responsible for China's increased silk production. Thus, the country that first developed silk culture approximately 4,700 years ago has again become the world main producer of silk. Silkworm eggs and the technology of making silk was brought to India by Buddhist monks from China through Khotan. Also, the industry is said to have speed to Tibet when a Chinese princess carrying silkworm eggs and mulberry seed in her air dress married the king of Khotan in Tibet. About two and centuries ago, silk was introduced into Karnataka by Tipu Sultan, the ruler of the state. Today, it is the biggest silk producing center in India. Silkulture introduced in Tamil Nadu from the border area of Karnataka during early 1960. Now, Tamil Nadu stands number one in bivalent silk produce production in India. The Mysore silk is synonymous with splendor and grandeur. Mysore silk has been registered as a geographical indicator. Karnataka silk culture has history of more than 215 years. In 1785, the Tiger of Mysore, Tipu Sultan established silk culture in Mysore Kingdom. He wanted to Mysore to be the foremost among silk producing nations. During these years, Karnataka silviculture has been many ups and downs in its long journey. It has transformed into a model in silviculture in the country. During early 19th century, while the world silviculture was collapsing, Mysore silviculture varieties flourished, remained stable through this period. And even today, it is the backbone of mulberry silviculture in India. In 1800, the Mysore Royal Government established silviculture in Maganelli near Chanapatna, which became the center of silviculture activities soon. In 1860, first silk filature was established in Bangalore by an Italian industrialist. During this period, many exotic Italian or Chinese or Japanese racers were used to produce crossfit layings by this filature. 
in 1896 great industrialists sir j n thata established a silk farm with a filature attached to it in japanese pattern in bangalore which is help of sri k s s adri hayyar the diwan of mysore he got the technical expertise from japanese couple mr and mr urdu who gave scientific outlook for silkiculture industry mr urdu trained sri v m appadare mudalayar and sri lakshman rao for the period of one year in this farm the architect of mysore sri m s s freya gave much importance to the silkiculture in rural development he hired the service of signor washington mary from italy to organize and develop silk industry in mysore in 1913 sigdor mary made available 12 varieties of pure european and chinese silk worm to conduct experiments and are the guardians of sigdor mary appadarai modalayar conducted native environmental breeding experiments in chennapatna they successfully developed in many cross breed combination between females of mysore local and males of european and chinese races which were far superior to their parents in 1914 sigdor mary shifted its headquarters to the bangalore and modal year continued to carry out the breeding experiments in chennapatna farm in 1914 independent department of silkiculture was established and sigdor washington mary became the first director of silkiculture In 1919 government hired the services of Japanese expert Mr Yunimura for conducting research and importing training in silk culture government started silk filature in 1922 and silk weaving factory in 1931 32 at Mysore during later part of 1970s under ISDP and during 1980 under World Bank aided two silk culture projects department of silk culture took up extensive expansion programs in infrastructures like grainages technical service centers and kakur markets were established <music> silkiculture emerged as a meaningful and viable agro based cottage industry it is being practicing in more than 30 countries across tropical and temperate regions produces silk their combined production adds up to about 75000 metric tons of raw silk in a year presently china india japan south korea and brazil are the leading silk producing countries japan which was once a leading silk producer until 1978 at present it is producing less than that of india and occupies only the third place in the world raw silk production and slowly shifted to other commercial enterprises China is a temperate country ranked first in the world raw silk production and account of for 53432 metric tons among tropical countries India is ranked second in the world mulberry raw silk production of the major producer of silk and accounting for 14305 metric tons of raw silk from 176065 hectares of mulberry garden annually World silk production has approximately doubled during the last 30 years in spite of man-made fiber replacing silk for some uses. China and Japan during this period have been the two main producer together manufacturing more than 50% of the world production each year. During the last 1970s China the country that first developed silk culture thousands years ago drastically increased its silk production and has again become the world's leading producer of silk directly and indirectly silk culture is provides jobs for about 10.67 lakh people one hectare of mulberry garden provides year of long continuous jobs for 13 persons karnataka has a well established multivoltaic and bivoltaic seed areas the cater to the demand of parental seed cocoons required for the production of cross breed and bivoltaic hybrid lines almost 88% of karnataka silkiculture is spread in southern part of karnataka which is fast modernizing factors like urbanization industrialization depleting water table scarcity of agriculture labor have affected silkiculture in this part mm-hmm.